Welcome to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. True stories with a side of wine. Looking for inspiration for your life and your wine glass? This is your podcast. Here's Kirsten. Hello, we're so happy to have you back with the Wines and Wonders podcast. I'm Kirsten Fox, and I'm very lucky today to have Danielle Bryan back in my office slash studio with me to talk about a really interesting concept. This week, we're going to be talking about how music and sound can change your mood. And I'm pairing that to Zach Brown, the country singer's wine. Uh, So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But Danielle was in the studio last week. We talked about how to learn how to take fear and possibly change it into something a little less powerful in our lives. And she gave us a really great tool called Stop, Drop, and Roll. And uh, Danielle, if you could just start again with your shamanic what you are, what's Mm -hmm. a shaman. And then also let us know, I I heard that you did some video on Mm -hmm. what is stop, drop and roll. Mm -hmm. We certainly have the whole podcast from last week, but if you don't have time to do that, will you tell us where to find that? Yes. So I am a master practitioner and teacher of shamanic energy medicine, shamanic energy healing. So I work with people one-on-one and I teach classes to help people come into a way of looking at their life from a place of journey, understand that we are energetic beings and how to bring shift and transformation to aspects or things in their life that they want to bring more alignment to or bring transformation to let go of, heal, create more of what they want. I mean, really it kind of runs the gamut. So it, you know, we work a lot with healing, quote unquote, that which isn't working. But the way I like to come to that is that we're bringing transformation and shift to places where we're out of alignment in our life and how to come back into greater alignment or greater congruence. And that can look many different ways depending on what we're working with. So, you know, the word shaman actually means the one who can navigate the spirit realms on behalf of another or for themselves. So, you know, my skill set is that I'm able to recognize and see energetic patterns and where density is laid down in someone's field and how to bring shift and transformation to it. So high level, that's what I do. Yeah, Yeah, it sounds, I mean, I don't know how all the people that apparently you're carrying around with you or you can see (laughs) in your world. It's pretty exciting. Well, you can turn it on and off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's be clear. Okay. It's not <laughs> but, like the yeah. sixth sense no, of the movie it's not. where you're like, no. oh no, I don't want to see you right now. No, we can we can work with that. Oh, okay. But there's um you know, I do have more information about that. If you want it more in depth about what is it and um what do I do, you can go to my website, shamanictwist.com. And I have other podcasts on my website that go through what it is that I do. And then there's a bunch of general information on the website. So Perfect. if that's of interest. And in reference to our podcast last week, I did do a Facebook live video. We talked about stop, drop and roll. And we talked about that place of when we find ourselves getting gripped in fear, what can we do to shift the density of fear and actually raise our frequency and raise our vibration. And so that's on my Facebook page, Danielle Bryan. And that's Danielle with two N's, D-A-N-N-I-E-L-L-E, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N. So that's where you can find that video. Perfect. It's great. It's so nice to have a short, quick way to snap yourself possibly out of stress and fear. Yes. So today we've got another tool we're going to be talking about, and that's music Mm -hmm. and sound. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to hear what you have to say about what sound and music truly is and how it relates to us as human beings? Mm. That's a big question, Kirsten. <laughs> how long is this podcast? Yes. That's <laughs> okay. right. <laughs> so um, uh, without going on and on, sound and music. So sound essentially is vibration. That's what sound is, right? Sound is vibration. Music is vibration. And we are vibration. We as energetic beings respond to vibration. We respond to that in many different kinds of ways. And it can, it can be measured, but we're not all running around with these instruments to measure our energy field and actually see it visibly with our eyes. But Mm -hmm. we can feel it. We know it, right? We've all had the experience 
of listening to a piece of music or a song that has shifted our mood. And I mean, the shift could be um, sentimental, it can be uplifting, it gets you up and out of your seat, you can't help it, you start dancing around, right? And so if we're having a response to it, when that happens, when you're listening to something and all of a sudden your head starts bobbing <laughs> yes. and your foot starts tapping and you didn't have the thought, oh, now I should tap my foot to this music. That is not what happens. You're actually having a response to it. So what's going on is that you are responding to the vibration that's moving in. That's that's what's going on. Because okay. it's not a real mental logical thing. You're not analyzing it. You're not no. sitting there saying, wow, this music is making me feel like I should just bob my <laughs> head along with it, right? That's not Correct. what goes on. It's not on. usually analyzed <laughs> no. like that. So, so. It's, you're responding to it because the energy of the music is coming in and it's actually moving you. Mm. And we hear that term. Oh, when I am getting ready to go out, which we can't do right yeah. now, but <laughs> when I am ready to go out... I put on, I call it my dressing drink yeah. tape because, or it's not a tape anymore, it's a playlist, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's a dressing drink because that's what my grandmother always said. She's mm-hmm. like, get me a dressing drink. In fact, just a moment, little here on the side, my grandmother, Nana, I was visiting in college and Nana, um, I was visiting her house in Memphis, Tennessee, in her husband's house. And um, she said, well, honey, would you make me a screwdriver? And I said, sure. And she said, bring it up to me. And and since we were getting ready to go out. And so I took this screwdriver. Now, remember, I'm in college. My drinks (laughs) were not not strong. I mean, they were strong (laughs) drinks. I had no idea. I just pour vodka for a while and then, you know, add it. Glug, glug, right? That's that's the measurement. (laughs) One glug or two or three. Or three. (laughs) And so this was not a non-strong drink. And I took it into her and she looked at it and she took a sip of it and shuddered just shuddered and I went oh Nan I'm sorry and she goes oh honey this has way too much orange juice in it (laughs) so she goes I need my dressing drinks much stronger than that and I thought oh my gosh this is so funny so anyway my playlist is dress a dressing drink playlist but I do put that on Mm -hmm. and it literally I get elevated to a new feeling. I get that my soul starts spinning and excited and it's just amazing to me. And the same happens in the other direction. Have you ever gone to a concert where you just can't get up and dance? You're like, it's not doing it for me, right? Or you listen to music and you're like, yeah, no, I'm going to sit this one out. Like it's not, I'm not feeling it. That's your changing the station. You're like, you know what? I thought this was going to sound good, but it doesn't to me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh And again, this is not a super conscious analytical thought process. It's a response Mm -hmm. to it. Because the the music is sound. Sound is frequency. Frequency is something that we are experiencing that is moving into our field and we're having a response to it at an energetic level. That's what's ultimately going on. So we can use music and sound for many different aspects, many different kinds of things. I use it in my personal practice with clients. I work with sound, typically at the end of a session. So, you know, a client comes in, we talk about what's going on, they get on my table, we do the clearing work, the healing work, whatever it is that's called for in that moment with that particular person. And then at the end of the session, I harmonize their field. And so I balance their whole field out and I do that with sound. What kind of sound do you use for that? I use either these particular chimes. I brought them for show and tell. Oh, I'm so excited. This is so exciting. Okay, so let's let's hear this. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. So basically you take that and you bring it over them at, or around I their I do head bring it over and- them, yeah. So this is audio and not video. It's a chime 
that you would hang outside. It looks like a cylinder and coming out of it, it has like a pendulum Mm -hmm. at the bottom, Mm -hmm. right? And so I actually hold that over a person and I move up through their chakra system. So we all have chakras. There are these energy vortexes that run right up the midline of our body. So I just take that over every one of those energy centers and I just let it spin and harmonize the field. And it's something that everybody actually looks forward to for clients who I see, you know, multiple times, they will come in and say, Oh, I love the chimes. That's my favorite part of the session. So because what it's doing is it's shifting and harmonizing and it's bringing in a higher frequency into the field. And I use crystal bowls and sometimes I use music. I will find pieces of music that are set to certain frequencies, certain hertz. And Mm. you can actually, you know, you too, what a wonderful blessing that that thing turned out to Mm -hmm. be, right? Um, But you can go to YouTube and you can search for certain frequencies for certain things. And so like 432 hertz is the high heart frequency and it brings in positive energy and it helps to release negative energy. 396 hertz is a frequency that helps you release guilt and fear. Um, 732 hertz is a high crystalline frequency that um, is like universal love, I believe, is how they talk about that one. So um, kind of geek out on this whole stuff. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Okay, so yes, yeah. let's just geek out for a okay. minute here because this is so amazing. So when you're doing this with a, a patient or a client, what I'm hearing you say is that as that client is lying there, you are holding this over their chakras. And this person actually, because we are vibrational beings, Mm -hmm. it actually helps harmonize our inside of us. That has nothing to do with whether we're touching it or playing it. So we actually almost become an instrument. Yeah, we are an instrument. We are an instrument. We are an instrument. Right. Wow. For those of you who are musicians out there, you guys know this, but when you're tuning, say, a guitar, you can tune and and you can entrain other instruments to certain keys, right? So I am not a schooled, skilled musician, so I'm not going to go all the way down this path for fear that I start talking about something that I don't know what I'm talking about. But I do know that you can tune a guitar simply by frequency and other instruments will entrain to higher frequencies. And it's the same thing with people. We have all experienced that place where we maybe we've been in a down mood and a friend comes over or we run into a friend in the grocery store and they're in a higher vibratory state and our mood lifts right? Yes, the, per- the people who you say, it just feels good to be around you. Uh-huh. Right. And mm-hmm. that's, that is a vibrational thing. That's an energetic thing. That's a frequency. Whether thing. they're singing or not. Yes, <laughs> okay. exactly. All right. And vice versa, uh, you're in a yes. great mood and you, you know, get around somebody who's carrying a really heavy mood. And sometimes you can feel that and take that on and it kind of pulls you down. Right. And mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, Kirsten, there's sayings in our society, like that person's such a downer or what a buzzkill or right. that person's so uplifting uh-huh. or they're so positive. Just being around them makes me feel better. So we already know this. Right. So now we're just talking about it in a much more conscious way of like, what is that thing? Why, why does it work that way? And it works that way because our energy body is interfacing and responding to another frequency and music sound can alter that. Like I said, you can go to YouTube, you can get very specific frequencies. There are people out there that this is their modality. They are sound healers. And Tom Kenyon is one. Uh, I've introduced you to Tom Kenyon. Yes. How do you spell his last name again? K-E-N-Y-O-N. I remember because we were lying down and we were (laughs) meditating, but you had, it was this, um, if I recall correctly, it was like a Mm -hmm. sound, Mm -hmm. but it was all about the right frequencies Mm -hmm. to do what you wanted us to do. 
whatever you needed us to do right. at that time. Yes. We got up and walked around like yeah, zombies. Like zombies. Yeah, like zombies. Yeah, no, no. The zombie frequency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not Make really, guys. Me dinner, <laughs> yeah. clean my house. Right. No, that wouldn't that wouldn't be effective. But um, yeah. So Tom Kenyon, he actually deals in these levels of hertz. That's what. Yeah, it is. frequency, and he uses his voice. Oh, right. Okay. So it's all voice derived for him. Whereas I just played a chime. We've got a crystal bowl here. Right. So those are instruments that we can play to create that frequency. But Tom Kenyon uses his voice. Now he does use other instruments within certain pieces that he's creating, depending on what he's doing and creating. But mm -hmm. most of what you hear from him, 99% of what you hear from him is all derived from his voice. Thank you. And so he's online. You can buy can Yeah, you, you buy can go online, TomKenya.com. Okay. He's got a bunch of stuff that you can download for free. Okay. And he has a bunch of stuff that you can purchase. So he's a sound healer. There's a man named Toby Christensen who I have known. He used to live here in Park City. And he's a drummer. And he works with the Jimbe drum and he does sound healings with the drum. It's amazing. It's amazing. And to have a session with him, he stands over you and he puts the bell of the drum right over you and he drums the song that's needed to bring shift and healing. There are hardly any words <laughs> to describe <laughs> yes. what is happening in that session. You know, he's been working with sound healing for a long time. And his website, I believe, is tobychristensen.com. And that's Christensen, S-E-N at the oh, end. S -E -N. Yeah, T-O-B-Y, Toby. So there are many people who work with sound as the modality. And actually, we've been seeing kind of a, you know, an insurgence of this. I know in this area, and I'm sure in other areas, we're starting to see people offering sound baths. I've Have seen, you seen those. That? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. I wasn't quite that woo woo yet. Yeah. I was like, I'm not oh, yeah. sure. Leave I... it to me. I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> <I know> you <laughs> All things woo. Yeah. All <laughs> things woo. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> no, but I um I've certainly had the experience of being at a concert in front of the bass. Yeah. And just I can feel my cells mm -hmm. beating mm -hmm. to that. And it's really exciting sometimes and really kind of overwhelming at others right, at times. Right, yeah. But when we're talking about sound and healing, when you are saying that we can go places and find out resources, what are we searching for on Google that is it sound healing? Is it healing for stress? What is the best? Or is it either just way? You, I mean, if you go on YouTube and you plug in sound meditation you will have a plethora of things to choose from. And it will say it right there. Look, I can tell you right now. Look at that. Amazing. If I type in sound meditation, that's what it sounds like as I'm spelling and talking, <laughs> then what comes up is all, I mean, look at all of this, right? So I'm scrolling hundreds through and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. hundreds, deep sleep music for stress relief, sound healing with crystal bowls, 432 hertz, three hour crystal singing bowl, healing sound bath. Come on. That is just right? for free, for right, free there right there on YouTube. 396 hertz, let go of anxiety, worries, and deep subconscious fears. Now, what's so fun and crazy about all of this stuff is that Tom Kenyon, you know, some of his pieces, he'll say, don't listen to this while you're driving a car. Oh. And, or he'll say, just listen to this for 20 minutes. Don't listen to this for an hour until you've listened to it a few times and you actually increase your vibration because it could actually make you feel weird or give you a headache or make you feel like you're buzzed a little huh. bit because what's happening is it's changing your frequency. It's shifting things and it can have a detoxing effect. Interesting. Um, so not to be scared, you guys, don't be scared to go put on your 396 Hertz for three hours. But I will tell you that as a very seasoned person in, in these realms, in this arena, that even I will feel altered when I come um, out of a 45 minute session of listening to certain frequency and you couple that with really intentional meditation and you're just amplifying what you're doing but a lot of times I just have it on in my house in the background I'll just flip it on the tv and 
push play and it will scroll through its playlist and it's just happening in the background. You're vacuuming and getting this. Yeah, yeah, stuff vacuuming and in. releasing subconscious yeah. fears. Okay, I mean, I hell love yeah, that. right? <laughs> we can clean and uh, <laughs> detox, multitask. <laughs> so I see that you brought here, there's a large beautiful bowl. Tell me about this bowl. Mm. It, and is it tuned to a certain yeah, thing? Yeah. Is. So, okay. It is in the key of F sharp, which actually aligns with our heart center. And oh, okay. so in the land of crystal bowls, Tibetan bowls, singing bowls, you will find them tuned into different keys and they will correspond with different energy centers. So you could buy a whole set of chakra crystal healing bowls and they'll go right up through all seven chakras and they're all in different keys and different notes. So how would anybody figure out what is the heart bowl sound versus the head bowl sound? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of differences. Yeah. Good question, Kirsten. Um, we don't know that. I don't know the answer <laughs> okay. to that question. I can't say, oh, this is exactly how it goes, but here's my best guess okay. at it, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like the chakras all have a color associated with it, and color is vibration. It's a frequency. Right. Right? So right. for those of you who are not familiar, we have these seven vortexes that we keep talking about. They're called chakras, and they run right up the midline of the body. And the root chakra is the first chakra, and that's like coming right out of your tailbone, pointing down to the earth. Second chakra, and, and that one's red. The second chakra is orange. It's right below your belly button. It has a front and back side. The third chakra is yellow. It's above your belly button. It has a front and back side. The fourth chakra is the heart chakra. It's green, front and back side. Fifth chakra is the throat chakra right at the notch of your throat. It's turquoise blue, front and back. Sixth chakra is the third eye. It's indigo, front and back. And then you have a crown chakra, the seventh chakra, right out of the top of your head. And it's violet, or some people see it as gold. So depending on how you sense your chakras and the colors. So those, you know, colors are vibration, they're frequency. So how did somebody attune different notes to the different energy centers? I'm not exactly sure, except that you can feel it actually, Kirsten, when, so I have a bowl, a giant, this, you think this one's big. I have a root chakra bowl that's <laughs> looks really like a cauldron. quite huge. It does. It looks like a cauldron. And when you play it, you actually begin to feel the reverberation in that part of your body. So oh. you feel it lower. You feel it in your pelvis is where you feel it. And when you play this one, even without knowing that that's what it is, you'll actually feel it up in your chest. Now, you have to be pretty in tune to decipher, is it my heart center, my throat chakra, or my third chakra, right? Uh -huh. Or the root, the big bowl for the root chakra. Is it my root chakra, number one chakra? Is it my second chakra? You know, but the area, but the area is... you actually feel that part of your body begin to vibrate and entrain with the sound. Wow. So. Will you play that? I will us, play please? it. Yes. 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 So for those of you listening, what Danielle did was she took a mallet with an a end on it that looks like rubber, a soft rubber, and she hit the bowl. And then she used that mallet on the outside of the bowl. And that's what you were hearing as it it warbled and it, it kind of did its, its singing. She was moving that mallet on the outside of the bowl around it um, and then hitting it again or hitting it that's kind of the, is that kind of the mode yeah. that's what you do yeah that's it yeah that's it so wow. you strike the ball to you know get it going and then you begin to play it I is see. what you do in the singing bowl and you can do all kinds of things you can keep hitting it to just to have that 
kind of bell sound, oh. right, where it strikes and then mm-hmm. it reverberates out, or you can play it so that the sound of it intensifies, right? You hear how loud it gets. It really and, got loud. Yeah. I was very surprised how yeah. loud that got. Yeah. Let's wrap up this portion about yeah. music and sound from your perspective mm-hmm. as a shaman. Do you want to give it, share anything that we haven't talked about in regards to, or maybe your most important tip for someone who's listening to help themselves if they're feeling afraid or if they're feeling something they want to change? Can you yeah. help me mm-hmm. with any kind of a tip? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we talked about this last week, Kirsten, that there's just, there's a lot happening out there right now. And it, it can feel heavy, it can feel dense, but there's a lot of shift and change ultimately that's going on. And so I would say to work with different things, check it out. If your normal practice isn't cutting the mustard for whatever reason, (laughs) then, you know, try some sound, go to YouTube, you can find all kinds of things there. And it it works. And, you know, here we are, we're talking specifically, I have these chimes, I have this crystal bowl, not everybody has that laying around, I do, right. Mm -hmm. And so I actually I use it. When I'm caught, if I'm stressed, you know, that feeling of you can't relax from the inside, right. And I'll just sometimes go into my treatment room and just start playing the bowl until my body begins to relax. Now I have it, it's in my repertoire, it's something that I go to, but it doesn't have to be. You can go online and get stuff. Jonathan Goldman, he's another great one. He has all kinds of stuff and uh, stuff that is really specific to you know, different chakras, different energy centers, and or different qualities that you're looking to release and or cultivate. But, you know, so here we are, we're talking, we're on the woo side of things. We're talking about using sound as the healing modality. And it's amazing. And it works. And there's studies out there, you know, for all you guys who want the facts, go online and just Google the health effects of sound. And there's a plethora of things that you will find but music too, right? We're going to talk right. about Zach Brown. I mean, right. music too. It's what just makes you feel good. Put something on that makes you feel good. Have a dance party. Uh, find your favorite music. If it lights you up, listen to it. Uh, there's no time like the present than to find music as that entry point into shifting you know, the mood that you're in. And we all, we all know that one. That's easy. Right. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. So we're going to cut to our sponsor here quickly and then come back with information about Zach Brown's wine. Stay tuned. Stay tuned to hear what type of wine Kirsten will pair with this story right after this. Today's podcast is brought to you by my company, Uplift Gift, when words aren't enough. When I had cancer, friends sent me the most amazing, wonderful gifts and cards, and they were from their hearts, and they made me feel so comforted and loved. And at the time, I was writing a column for the Huffington Post on wine pairings called Wines to Pair with Life. And so I wrote a series of articles about wines to pair with breast cancer. So in my public purview, people started contacting me saying, what should I send my friends? What were the best gifts when someone gets bad news? And finally, I just heard, you know, this message that said, this is what you need to do, Kirsten. This this is your gift out of your cancer that you can give the rest of the world. So the company, again, is Uplift Gift. And we help you support your friends and loved ones who may be far away from you, who just are getting a divorce or are dealing with a parent dying or are struggling with a new diagnosis. I realized people need help talking to others who've been given bad news. Since I've been through that experience quite a few times in my life, I feel like the Uplift Gift series of gift boxes are a perfect fit to help you support your friends. Uplift Gift, when words aren't enough. Next up, Kirsten's choice for a wine to open after the show.
Awesome. Thank you, Danielle, for bringing us <laughs> some Zach Brown band there. Love it. Love multiple sources of technology. It's, it's awesome. So what we're going to talk about now is wine, and I, like we always do on Wines and Wonders. And we've spent a little time, if you're just joining the show, Danielle Bryan is with me again, and we've been talking about using music and sound to change your mood. And we got some information on the first half of the show, if you're interested in going back, about certain hurts that you can surf to really bring in some healing to your life. Also, Danielle cited a few people. We'll put those up in the show notes so you can go find their websites and um, look at what resources they have as sound healers. So I thought, as we were discussing the type of the show, I wanted to talk about musicians and and what they, how they kind of cross the line from both being sound healers, but also then into the wine world. So I looked back at history and ancient Greeks and Romans, the famous people of the day, the philosophers, the playwrights, you know, like the generals and the politicians, they all <laughs> literally had vineyards so that they could supply themselves with wine. It was that important. And what's so interesting is now, in our day and age, these celebrities, they've got plenty of money and they do the same thing. Many celebrities I found in my research, which I didn't know this yet, but they actually have vineyards just for their own wine. When I look at, say, Francis Ford Coppola, that's the one that I think mm -hmm. of, he has two wineries. He has the Fra Francis Ford Coppola winery and also Ingle Nook, which is a very famous. He paid more to use the Ingle Nook name than he did to buy the entire winery, if you can imagine. What is Ingle Nook? Ingle Nook is one of the first wineries in all of Napa. Oh, okay. V done and, and created by a very, very famous person in wine. So, um, and it starts with an N, I'm not going to remember it right now. But um, anyway, and then we've got like, for example, Johnny Depp mm. and his and his partner, Vanessa, own a winery in the Cote de Provence that mm. they just use to get themselves wine. Wow. Apparently, he's got a wine cave that looks like one of the Pirates of the Caribbean caves <laughs> that he keeps his wine in. I'm not sure if that's true or not. We'll spread rumors. Yeah, we'll spread yeah. rumors. Okay. So I thought, what, what other musicians, uh, well, these those were actors, but what musicians really have been in, involved in the world of wine? The first one that came to mind was the Zac Brown Band, and he owns Z Alexander Brown Winery in Northern California. He apparently owned a restaurant before he started his band. Oh. So he's been in the culinary world and then he just loves wine. So he's partnered up with a guy named John Kellebrew and they released their first two vintages in January of 2016. Um, then we've got Fergie. She owns Ferguson Crest Winery in California and she and her dad, Pat Ferguson, who's a viticulturist, founded Ferguson Crest in San Inez Valley. Sting oh, owns a winery. No way. Okay, so seriously, I've had a thing for Sting my whole life. So he owns a winery called Il Palagio in Tuscany. Mm. And they not only sell the wine there. Now, this winery, Il Palagio, has been open since oh, the 1500s. He bought it with his wife in 1999. But they also sell their own olive oil and their own estate honeys. Wow. From there, oh, that's just field trip. Wouldn't that sound like fun? Yes. Oh my gosh! Um, then, as okay. soon as the travel ban is <laughs> done, yes, we're we going. Go. <laughs> we know where we're we booking do. our first yes. ticket. Um, Les Claypool, who was the part of the Primus group, and also he wrote the theme song for South Park. Mm. Um, he owns Claypool Cellars, and his slogan is first thing he started it literally in a shed <laughs> in his backyard. But um, he sell, calls it fancy booze for semi-fancy folks, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> um, Gerald Casale. Now, I had no idea what that name was. He owns 50 by 50 out of California. Almost all of these are out of California, by the way. But he was a 70s co-founder and bass player of Devo, the band Devo. Mm. And so they own the 50 by 50. And then Boss Skaggs oh, nice. owns Skaggs Vineyards All in right. Napa Valley. In, and he bought that in 1996. Dave Matthews owns Blenheim Vineyards. And he purchased it 
in Virginia. This is in Virginia because he wanted in 1999 to preserve the historical nature of this. But he apparently they put out some interesting wines there and he's kind of got a viticulturist who helps him there. But um, that's his winery. Hmm. So and then Mick Fleetwood owns one. Oh, nice. yeah. Mick Fleetwood yeah. Private Cellars out of California. Mm-hmm. And apparently he has won some acclaim from his fellow celebrities. We'll put it that way. <laughs> John Legend. Yeah. Has um, some, he involves himself in Raymond Vineyard out of, and he they call it the LVE collection, which stands for Legend Vineyard Exclusives. Hmm. So it's kind of fun to look into all of these uh, today. And I chose as our wine one that you'll hear about right after this. So it's a, from a musician, it's out of California. And stay tuned for the wines that I'm suggesting you pair with this episode. Stay tuned to hear what type of wine Kirsten will pair with this story right after this. All right. Are you ready, Danielle? I'm ready. Okay. Lay it on me. All right. Well, because you and I are country lovers. Yes, we are. And because, my goodness, when I put a country song on, it almost always has a story in it. Mm -hmm. And the story can distract me. Mm -hmm. It can also educate me. It can enlighten me on other feelings. It can can take me far away from what I'm currently feeling at that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm pairing today's podcast and using music to alter your moods, music and sound, to the Zach Brown band, Ba-Bam, <laughs> and his winery, Z Alexander Brown. He has wines that are called uncaged wines. I just love these wines. And all the wines, he's been producing these wines since 2016, all of them are under $20. So I'm pairing like all of his wines right. to the show today. <laughs> So he has right now for sale, he's got a North Coast Sauvignon Blanc. He's got a Santa Lucia Highlands Chardonnay. He has got a Pinot Noir that is sourced from Monterey, Napa, and Sonoma. And he has got a California Cab. All of these seriously under $20. And then a California Red Blend that he has that is also under 20 bucks. So I am going to suggest that you go out and find the nearest uncaged wines by Z Alexander Brown Winery. Turn on some country music or turn on some music that's going to take you away one way or another from any stress or fear that you might be feeling and lift your glass to the musicians of the world who have Musicians, excuse me, and sound healers. I'm learning that new <laughs> new thing. Musicians and sound healers who have provided so much in the way of changing our lives and our vibrations mm-hmm. with with their music and their talents and their sounds. Anything you'd want to add to that? Well, how perfect that his wine is called Uncaged when some of us may be feeling caged in right now (laughs) with our social distancing and our self-quarantining, right? Perfect. (laughs) Yes. Oh, thank you so much for coming in again. (laughs) Thank you. We will see you next time on Wines and Wonders, filling your life with hope and your glass with wine. If you've got a moment, please leave a review on your podcast station of choice. And thank you for tuning in to Wines and Wonders.